Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and the black locust is blooming. The empress trees, also known as polonias, tulip poplars just starting, and there's a couple other plants contributing as well. And it's go time, busy time of the year. I was at a bee club not too long ago, and a guy was saying, don't get into your bees, but every couple of weeks, because if you do, it really retards everything. The problem is, while sometimes the year we only get in two, three weeks and check our bees, this time of the year, we're getting in once a week, especially on honey production colonies. Um, the sm some of the smaller ones, maybe not so much, but the honey production colonies mm -hmm. like this one, mm -hmm. it's this or original first surge of nectar for the honey crop. It we've got to get in here. They want to make cells, even if they have room. So what do I mean by room? So here's the top honey super we added about a week and a half ago. Here's this other one right here. Let's check and see what's going on. This will tell us a lot, tells me a lot. And these bees are a little irritable. I've had them open for probably 20 minutes. First video wasn't any good. <laughs> All right, so look at this right here. They're drawing out nice new wax. They're depositing nectar up in these honey supers. It's awesome. And this frame feels like, you know, there's a little, you can definitely feel there's some weight into it. This is an old honeycomb. It's never had anything in it but honey and it's still doing a great job for us. So this was the one closest to the brood chamber, but this is so important right now. This first surge of nectar, big surge of nectar. We've had some little trickles here and there of small flows, but black locust is always, whenever it doesn't get nipped by frost, is always a wonderful key indicator of honey production here in Tennessee. And so they're starting to fill this up we got this one up on top, and you've got to remember the nectar comes in almost as thin as water. So it takes a lot of room. They've got to spread it out to condense it down, and we don't want that room down in here. In early spring, we have so much pollen coming in here, and many areas do because these plants bloom more in the spring, so you have lots of pollen going into the brood nest. The queens are laying wide open. If that nectar gets all down in here, they'll definitely swarm and even if they have room like we've given them they still might swarm anyways it just won't be quite as intense of a initial surge so let's get down in here i've already yanked a couple combs and see if we have any swarm cells or if they're starting them i was just in here last week you got to do it we don't do it every week for months but the first few weeks of honey production season is the most critical and when most of the swarms get sent all right, this is a heavy frame right here. Look at that nectar down in here. That's a lot of nectar down into this frame. Now, there's a lot on the adjacent frame, but there was already a decent bit in this hive prior to the honey supers, because they, they have to have food prior to the honey flow as well. They can't just be living from hand to mouth. So. It's understandable that we'll have a couple of frames in this top deep like this. Mainly we want to check the brood frames, but if we see any swarm cells, we have to go through every single frame. And right now we're in double brood management. I'm considering just going back to that because I have a lot of other things occupying my time these days, and it makes it a little bit less of a stressor on me as far as a management side of things. I don't have to break them down and I don't have to feed as hard when I yank all the supers off because they'll have so much honey left in this second deep box. So I'm seeing capped brood up in here. There's larvae down in the center. Just tons of bees on this frame but what I need to see are there any swarm cells and they can be anywhere. Don't believe those folks that say that hey they're only on the bottom. Hey, 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 there's the queen right there. Look at that. White dot queen from last year. And she, when I saw her, she was back down into a cell laying an egg. I'm wondering if she'll do it again. Oh, there's an egg right there. Oh, oh I thought she, there she goes. And she's down in that bottom cell. You can't really see because of the bees, but she is just going to town as fast as possible and some people are like cayman you know swarm cells are only at the bottom the queens are the ones that lay the eggs and put it in the cell queens this time of the year are just 
dying to find any place to put an egg. They are just laying so much and so fast. So, what happens if the queen comes to this area and puts an egg in that? That is a queen cup. Oh, look at the queen up there. She's doing it again. You know, a lot of times we're so busy we don't take the time for these moments. And this is the best time of the year for it. Queen like this, she'll lay 1,500 eggs a day this time of the year. That's a lot of bees. But if she comes up to this cell up top that I was showing you a minute ago, or I should say Laurel was showing you. Wow, look at that girl go. They'll draw this into a swarm cell. So it doesn't matter where it's at. It just depends on where she puts the egg. And this hive's been open for 20 minutes and she's still laying like that. A good queen, especially this time of the year with this level of nutrition, just they just go at it. Great little carny right there. Now what I'm going to do is gently blow on the bottom. This is where most of the swarm cells are on the bottom. I'm not seeing anything that's leading me to think that there is any swarm cells on this frame. We're gonna do a little bit more of an inspection than this. All it takes is a little bit of a miss. Carefully put that down into there. Wow, they've got that glued up. This frame's got some weight to it. Whew. Yeah, this is mostly or all food. So check that. Lots of honey and nectar in there. And those are some cups. You just never know where the queen might go and lay a mm -hmm. swarm cell. There's nothing in there. Some people call these practice cups. They just have them for whenever the queen needs them. Especially when the colonies are big. Bigger colonies typically have more of these. And some bees are more prone to this than other types of bees. I have heard that Russians are more prone to that. However, I don't have a lot of experience with Russian bees. This frame is nice and full. What we need to do now is I want to drop down a little bit. On some of these combs, there was some cells that looked like they might have been starting some and the queen was putting some eggs in them. I'm just going to check a little bit more. All right, so we have 10 frames here in the bottom box. Some people say you can't have nine frames in one deep and 10 in the other. You can totally do it. It's, I like having 10 in the brood nest area. Now, instead of yanking all of these out, what we can do is just pry it up from the bottom and look underneath. But what I'm gonna do is just grab a couple of these out because I wanna see what they look like as well but if you're we're in a hurry just pry it from the bottom look underneath you'll find a swarm cell if they're in the mode of swarming there'll be one or two down in there just scoot this to the side we know the queen's not down in here she's in that other box There's a bunch of good larvae in there, bee bread, some nectar on the edges. Some more good brood. I'm only gonna pull one more.
Oh, wow. So on that adjacent frame, look at all that cap brood right there. This colony is just ripped. There's brood on this frame that looks really good. There's brood on this frame that looks tremendously good. I was in this colony last week, but we want to keep them from swarming. And once we get them to really commit to honey production, this colony will probably produce over 100 pounds as long as the weather works in our favor. I'm not seeing any swarm cells down here developed. I'm seeing a lot of drone brood. Some people will say this is an indicator that the colony's fixing to swarm. It's just that there's drone brood in there. Now, do you have more swarms when there's more drone brood? For sure. That just means the colony has a lot of nutrition and they have excess and that's when they like to swarm and that's when they like to raise drones. But if you see a lot of drones and a lot of drone brood, that doesn't mean your colony is gonna swarm. My best honey production colonies have tons of drones and a pretty good bit of drone brood. So that's, if you see drones and drone brood, that doesn't mean your colony is fixing to swarm any day now. But it could be doing both at the same time, you just never know. And until you look, and as beekeepers, we can make quick, gentle inspections and see what's going on in our colony. So this is a, a really good looking hive right here at the start of the flow. Blackberry blossom is just starting to open. I wouldn't say it's yielding nectar yet, but it's getting really close and blackberry blossom in a good year. Oh my goodness, what a great honey producer. What a prime nectar that is. And we'll just make all kinds of honey with this colony right here. So we have to be careful putting this last frame, especially when we have 10 frames in. A lot of times I'll just, oh, do you see that? I'll shake them off so I don't crush any or try to, but look at all that nectar that came out. If it's shaken out that easily, that means it came in today. So that's nectar coming in today, probably from those black locusts. And it's just raining off the frames. That's excellent. But that nectar needs to go up in those honey supers, not down here in the brood. This colony seems to be doing a pretty good job, though. And we are going to put it back together. And when there's this many bees, it's very difficult to not use a lot of smoke to try to move the bees around so we avoid crushing them, if at all possible. Try to get them out of the way where we can. And set this next box right here. We'll just kind of slide it along and do our best. A lot of bees in this colony and just think how many are out in the field right now because in the middle of the day they're out there and going after it. Now if you have some extra combs and you're like I have extra drawn combs what can I do here to maybe free up a little more space for the queen. I think this colony is in pretty good shape. There's space clearing every day down there where the brood is emerging. Some up here probably too. And as long as they devote to really condensing that nectar up in the supers, I think this colony will be fine. But you can take a couple of these frames of food and drop some combs in there if you have them. Foundation really won't do much good. You could drop some combs in here in these positions. Don't try to drop it in between the brood too much. And you can give those frames of food to a, a young colony that maybe needs it. Or you can stick them in the freezer until the flow's over and feed them back later. Um, just to kind of give that queen some laying room. Combs are so valuable. These supers right here, by the time I'm done, well, it'll be dangerous for me to take the honey super off this colony. So we'll probably drop this colony almost to the ground. Short people problems. But the honey flow is here. And I hope you all have a good season. Things are shaping up nicely, but things can change quickly, too. So this is mostly brood in the center. But what kind of one made me, uh, I can't say anything today, but there was a lot of cups down here at the bottom, several in a row, just do, 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 do. But none of them have any eggs in them. Oh, speaking of room being cleared, there's a bee right there being born. And that bee 
By the time it's ready to fly, I imagine we'll have privet and all kinds of different things blooming. It'll, it's born during the happiest time of the year if you're wanting to make honey. That's for sure. This colony's in good shape. You're like, well, Cayman, when are you going to come back? Well, I came back last week and they had started making some swarm cells very, very early stages. I cut those down. They seem to have not picked up that swarm tendency into this week. I'll come back next week and I'll check them one more time. Maybe add another super. And then I'll, I won't check them every week. I'll probably come back and check them two weeks later. Gotta watch this one. A lot of times these uh, combs, as they raise a lot of brood, a drone brood on the bottom, they get so fat that you can crush a lot of bees. And if they're queens on those combs, you can get her on accident. And again, I'm just looking at these dry cups down in here. And thankfully there's nothing down in them, but you just never know. Lots of just gorgeous, healthy brood up here. Looking good. Nope, it's not going to quite fit. Uh, I'll scoot that over. And that'll work. People are like, well, what do you do about all this stuff on top? Do you clean this every time? Definitely not this time of the year, I don't. I'll come back in a week later and every one of these will be back where they were. And healthy bees just make burr comb on top and, and different things like that. When there's a lot of nectar coming in, they just do it and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Don't worry about it. The bees like it. Unless it's just getting in the way and damaging a lot of stuff, it's not a big deal. These excluders are great tools. Keep, keep that queen down and out of the supers. Help me take off nothing but pure honey when the time comes. Yep, definitely some weight in that super. People ask me about ventilation in the supers and do I have any and should I and all that kind of stuff. Well, some of these supers are so old, they're holy. Bees have ventilation anyways, but I really don't focus on it a lot. Maybe I should, but I don't worry about upper ventilation or anything like that. Strong bees and I'll let them take care of it. All right. Well, thanks for watching this video. Good looking county right here. Bet we'll pull three, four, five mediums off of this one. Thanks for watching.